Hello, everyone. How is everybody on this Wednesday or well, evening UK time? Morning US. Uh, early morning or night time still, or early morning, very early morning in Australasia. Oh, it's pretty warm here today which is lovely, got a bit of sunshine, a bit of decent weather, or semi-decent. Got the back door wide open to the garden. And I have tea. Always good with the world. Piping, I'd say. So, how is everybody getting on? Let me know who's there. Let me know if you've got anything that you want to talk about. Um, what I'm going to be working on today is uh, the triple axis tile, uh, the stepper control tile. Um, I also need, I've got all sorts of bits, I suppose I better go through the bits I've received. Um, one of the reasons uh, that I haven't ordered the boards yet is because I want to include the stepper on it because that's become a bit more of a priority. There's a couple of things I need to work on. So some of the things that arrived for example are these uh, I've got some uh, you know make a beam this is uh, for a small for the smaller part this is like a 60 600 mil length I've also got whole meter lengths as well there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to build um, so that we can work on some motion control stuff um, any ideas you've got on that front, let me know. Um, I mean, I do have some ideas of my own, obviously. But if you've got any that you want to explore as well, or you think that would be a good subject matter, um, again, let me know uh, the ideas. What else we've got? Oh, yeah. When it comes to separating the boards, the stacks on the tiles, um, I originally ordered some... Uh, I don't know where they've gone now, but they were too big. But the uh, right size ones have now arrived. Is there eBay? Oh, focus, come on, which is good. Get some more of those. What else did I get? Um, oh, typically, cock up. Uh, so easy to do. I've done it, do this so often. Uh, I was ordering um, the. Um, the headers, the tiles. Um, my frame rate may be low for some reason. I don't know why. I'm seeing a lot of red lining. Apologies. Um, I don't know where that is. Hold on. Let me just check something. I know why. It's my fault, my end. That's strange. Why can't I get this? Let me just solve this problem. Uh, I think I am using. Ethernet. Is it trying to buffer over the um
This is very strange. I'm dropping a lot of frames. Bear with me. I'll continue in a bit. Just let me have a look. See if I can. I thought for a minute I was going over Wi-Fi rather than Ethernet, but that's not the case. Um, frames missed. Yeah, bit rate is really low. What the hell is going on? Bear with me a sec, let me just check the router. This is really odd. Just check a few things, guys. Okay, that seems to be better. Hopefully, we can continue. Is it all okay now? Um, hi, Laurie, by the way. Yeah, apologies. Uh, I seem to be green lining now. That's good. I don't know what was going on there. That was really odd. Anyhow, let me start again. You are still there, aren't you guys? Let me know. Because my stats aren't showing that. That's really weird. Why don't my stats show that? As far as my stats are concerned, no one's looking. There, anyhow, I'll continue as long as there's somebody there. Right. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I mess up again is ordering the headers for the um, tiles. Um, what I actually needed was, damn it, where are they gone? It was 1.27. Uh, mil, i.e. 0.05, and these are 2.54 spaced. So damn easy to do, uh, particularly on uh, when you order on AliExpress and places like that, to get the sizes mixed up when you're when, when you're ordering. Um, so I tend to use very similar images, and I got some uh, 2.54 ones that I actually wanted, two by threes. I didn't really want 50 way ones, but anyhow, I'll find a good use for them. I always do. Um, so that's good. That's the size I'm after. Can you see the difference? I mean, these are female, obviously. Big. Small. Big. Teeny tiny. Oh, well, I'll order some more. Um, I also, I've been meaning to buy these for a while. These are interesting. Why are these interesting? Now, let me show you. Um, need. Yes. Had these uh, in my basket for a while and um, forgot to order them. Um, it's not for the initial, um, I have been working on Ethernet tile by the way, but th th this is not for them. This is for, um, this is for a subsequent version. Uh, hold on. So I'm trouble with these wired lava mics. <laughs> Um, 
Oh, where have I put these? Damn. Too much stuff. This is the right one. Okay, so the normal... Hang on here, why are these all... Ah, there's a hole oh, in this bag. Bear with me. Somewhere in here, I must have the damn things. Uh, what did I do with them? That is a bit annoying. to rearrange some of this stuff. Uh, I had these out last time. I can't see the board. Damn. Um, so much easier to show it if I've got it. There we go. It was already on my desk. So this is what the uh, normal Ethernet arrangement looks like on the board. Okay. You see, how that looks. See how tall that is. Now, look at the height of this. Right? Look at the size of that. A, the height's small, lower, but more importantly, it's smaller but it's actually better than that because when you actually put it on board these ones it's kind of clever because it drops down thus can you see where that's happening there look see how it's dropping through the board So you actually have a gap in the board. You can see underneath here, look. So it actually goes below the board. So you're down to about a 9mm height rather than a 15mm height. So I'd had those in my basket for a while. So, um... I completed that order and ordered a few of those. That's not for the current design of the of the um, Ethernet board, but for the next version, I'd like to do a lower profile one. Because the trouble is, these things, these regular ones, just stick up so high, so far above everything else. Um, so yeah, I, I received those. Uh, other bits I've received: wheels for the sliders. Um, these are for making the um, uh, what do you call them? Slider bearings for the motion uh, corners. These are like right angled corners for um, attaching the twenty uh, twenty. Um, 
make a beam or whatever you want to call it construction beam stuff I showed you earlier uh, I've also got some sliders as well I don't know where I put those in doing the vertical movement stuff where did I put those in here and bags of screws and stuff lots of those and spaces uh, where's that gone I really do need to get myself a bit more organized back to those when I remember um, they're basically for doing Z type on a mounted platform to do the Z axis they're like small sliders about so tall um, I also most importantly because we need to do this today got some of uh, these now these are quite cool I've already got one out somewhere hold on Um, where did I put the single one that I've gone out? I do need to work with that today. Hmm. I need to show you how they work. Um, right, let me answer questions first. Uh, what are you thinking of making with step of motor control? Well, I've got several things. Um, initially I want to do a small platform for testing uh, motion uh, and probably one of the easiest things to do on something like that is you just do a small platform that can sit on the desk that you can use just to get things working and you can also like put in a pen sometimes which is quite handy and have it do some plotting and stuff just to get your axes going and get the Verilog done for that and the code that's needed to support that and the motion planning be able to do your um, you know uh, trapezoidal speed controls and all that kind of stuff get the basics working there then you can move to a bigger platform um, I've got all sorts of motion systems that I want to build long term I'd like to do a decent version of open PMP but that's that's a long way away because that's very involved um, one of the ones that I've been toying around with um, I'm interested in a bunch of automation ideas one of them is to kind of do a kind of um, like garden uh, or or growing um, robot I've got an idea for doing that basically you know a, a robot that can basically look after 
um, um, some growing vegetables and things like that you know maybe uh, different levels or herbs or, or something like that to be able to manage you know a rack of um, um, organic growth of some sort possibly vegetables or things um, the trick with that is going to be um, closing the loop with the vision stuff um, that's quite important uh, Laurie says what is open oh open PNP pick and place pick and place machine it's open source pick and place um, but that's a long long way away there's a lot that needs to be done before we get there um, snooze badger hi um, any plans for a HDMI tile or dual P mod so that we could use the one bit squared HDMI P mod um, I was thinking about that this week. Yes, I want to do some HDMI solution. Um, not sure whether I'm going to use a direct HDMI connector or whether I'm going to try the uh, alternate USB-C mode version. But I'll do one. I'll do it. I do a tile. Um, for uh, driving digital video um, I just haven't decided which way round to do it yet um, I was looking at the, that this week trying to source um, the right USB connectors um, to do the alternate mode stuff or I might just go with a HDMI connector the advantage of going the USB route is it it doubles up in functionality um, but it does mean that you require a special cable if you're going to go that route so it might be simpler just to go with a HDMI connector but there will be something tile wise like that whether I do that in the first batch or the second batch I don't know because I've got a whole bunch of tiles that I want to do I won't be able to do them all in the same batch. Um, let me know your thoughts on should it be a you know like regular HDMI connector or is it worth trying out the um, alternate mode USB connection to HDMI. Um, in terms of connectors, let me see if I can find the one I got out because where did I put the cable? I'm just checking here actually. I should put it back. No, I didn't put it back in there. Um, one of the things I was talking about last week was how I'm going to do the connectors. And I ordered some surface mount connectors and they've come. That's what these are. Um, damn, I'm sure. Oh, maybe I put it back. Let me just check. I might have put it back in here. That'd be daft. No, I didn't. All right, well, let me get another one out then. It's annoying. These, oh, I was looking at under the microscope. Maybe I've knocked it off. They're, as usual, um, they are slightly smaller than I imagine them. I mean, they're not from a CAD point of view because I've already done the the library part for it. But um, when you actually use them, so let me show you what these puppies look like. That is, assuming. Uh, you can see this. You can see how small that is. Yeah. It's 
quite small and you just place the wires in the end there and it grips them um, you can help ease wires in but basically there's like a V clamp uh, that sprung inside and when you push the wire in it opens the V up which clamps it again oh look <laughs> just got another one out and look I found the one that I already had out on the end of a piece of wire surprisingly let's see if we can get this in focus I need to hide myself again there is when I do this I can't actually see the camera the um can you see and then once it's in I mean this is solid core so it's a bit better it's quite quite well attached now I also tried something really small I had these battery things and they've got these really tiny but small um, cables at the end and these do not get gripped on properly the trouble is they're so weak at the end that they won't separate the clamp so we have to be a bit careful about what we support for a start I think the wires will need to be either a solid core or if they're multi-core they need to be thick enough heavy duty enough and they need probably need excuse me to be soldered in order to push through that V to get clamped but otherwise I think they're good size wise so what I want to do today is actually um, update that triple access driver and see if we can finish it off so that I can get uh, these puppies now you can see the bottom of it it's difficult to see how they clamp though but they are surface mounts and uh, they do work that's the wrong end It's really strange how it works out its focus. It's not in the centre, probably. Put in this hand, probably easier. And at least I can cover my face. No, they're just too small. Uh, Laurie's saying, um, if you're still thinking about a mix mod tile, that would support the one bit squared HDMI. Yeah, I, I think Ian, I think Peter said something about making some more of those as well, by the way he's never really stopped them apparently or well, he's only stopped one sort not the other but I think he's going to stop the others as well uh, yeah that's a possibility I am less keen on making the mix mod super tile though because although it'd be a nice option it means that you fill up that super tile uh, I will do the single or the double P mod if you like I mean we we I showed that last week that's that's all rooted now and ready to rock and roll I've got to run a few checks on it but that's ready to be um to be made but yeah the only way we can support if you like the quad tile or the quad double or sorry the double double is on a super tile because you need 16 IOs which you don't get on a standard tile you only get that on the super tile. Right, let's switch to the layout stuff. Any, anyone got any news, by the way, whilst I'm doing this?
um, or questions around the tiles and stuff. Yeah, so uh, I was thinking on the robotics, on the automation and robotics front, yes, some sort of um, agro bot, uh, maybe using a Cartesian system. So if I've got a bunch of uh, sh sh racked uh, growing trays, you know, maybe pre-growing trays or something like that, then either side I could have a Cartesian, well, I could have a Cartesian frame and then that will give me my positional, two-dimensional position on that rack with an arm that goes in that can control things like um, watering uh, the different uh, agricultural trays. The it can we can probably add things like uh, um, moisture probe. We'd have a camera on it as well, so that you can see. I mean, you could even do fancy stuff like have it deweave and do all that kind of stuff. There's all sorts of things that you can do, but basically to aut automate the um, the um, management of the uh, you know a small number of crops on shelves. And there's some good software out there from people like Farmbot that I'm sure that we could hook into to do the management. Um, but I, but for me particularly i i know you can do the big cartesian um what do you call them uh growing pots but in the uk that's not always the best thing to do best thing to do for growing a lot of things in the uk because of the climate is to have them in a small um not necessarily a glass house if you've got a big glass house great but you can buy these small racked houses that are covered in like a a green coloured um, polypropylene or something. So an all-in-one unit. So all I'd do is I'd fit the Cartesian interface to the front of that and then plumb in um, some water. I mean, we could also add liquid fertilisers and stuff as well if we wanted to. Um, but it's quite a good application. It's not particularly demanding in terms of performance. So it's quite a good one to start with. It's also quite interesting. Um, as I say, I'm open to all sorts of ideas that we can do on management. Uh, and it's important to have the camera interface as well, because the camera interface, basically, you know, if you're driving something like open, um, open loop control using steppers, which is what I'm using this triple axis control for, you probably want, I mean, you can encode the rotor shaft, but that doesn't actually tell you if you're moving. If it slips or gets caught, you know, in its movement, that wouldn't necessarily tell you that. Um, but by using the combination of an accelerometer on the, you know, the tall arm, the aggro arm, um, to detect the movement, plus using the camera, you can do some image processing to do things like... Um, uh, zoom detection, I think it's called zoom detection, uh, where basically you're looking for a shift in pixels in a particular, uh, at a, you know, with a particular vector based on the direction. In other words, pixels that were there move to here, or a blob that was there moves to here or here or here, depending on which way you go. So you can do you can close a loop in all sorts of different ways. You know, the combination of the accelerometer and some image processing you can use to um, actually make it a bit more intelligent and a bit more smart about what it's doing. Now, I'm not talking about picking fruit here, although I'd love to do that one day. That's actually pretty, pretty difficult to do. Um, here, I'm just looking about managing a very small selection of crops of herbs or um, you know, vegetables or something like that, something simple. Um, and the reason I'd go with the vegetable type thing is I know there's good software, open source software out there that we can hook into that enables you to do the management and stuff, which is kind of cool. So we just focus on the, uh, the movement and some of the image processing in that case. Um, one of the other things I was thinking about that'd be nice as an add-on 
Um, I mean, later on, I'd like to add things like um, power management and, you know, like MPPTs and stuff. If you're going to have battery controlled systems, you know, you need a, um, something like an MPPT to handle um, high efficiency power transfer from the, from the panels into the battery. Um, but the easiest way to do it from start, um, and also, you know, solar is not that reliable, um, particularly in the UK, and certainly not reliable at night. Um, the, the other thing that you can do is you can just power it and have it charge your battery, so it's got a reserve. But um, I was thinking probably the easiest way of doing that, I mean, we can do it via USB, but if something would be outside, you probably want to do longer cable runs. Um, so probably um, I was thinking about doing a super tile that maybe has Ethernet and power over Ethernet on it as well. So then we can run out a single cable, uh, PoE. And what the PoE does is it basically delivers enough power, about 50 watts normally. Uh, and that's used to constantly uh, charge your battery. Um, and then when the motion is is, is required, um, then it then it draws from the battery, um, and it's got the current that it needs in order to do that. Um, but whenever it's not doing anything, it's charging. So that might be quite easy. And that the nice thing about that it means that you've got one basically Cat5 cable to the agro bot um, that basically um, carries the charging power and the data you know 100 megabits per second um, and you can also include video in that as well so that's kind of cool so that's what one of the early wing things that I'm thinking of maybe doing but before I get to that stage I just just used to do a small Cartesian frame um, and then we can get the basic stuff operating with that any questions on that front before i move on to the board or any ideas of um other challenges that we can solve um using this i'd also like to do a free rolling uh, agro bot at some point but that's a bit more complex that's a much bigger project um, what this is about is really getting the basic um, hardware and HDL and software code done to get the motion control right and get some of the image processing done on the camera front and the accelerometer stuff, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Laurie's saying, I experimented with sprinkler and hose control in my garden. The power was a problem for that. What you mean? Um, the so driving the sol solenoid, I use 12 volt CCTV cables. Yeah, well, this system I'd probably drive at, um, you know, PoE works at 48 volts. You know, the you need to be driving the steppers at about 20 volts, maybe 24 volts. Um, you can actually drive them higher if you want. So. 24 is a nice voltage, 18 is not bad, 18 may be enough, depends on the um, on the load, the torque that you're carrying on the arm. Um, but yeah, you, you're talking about, so if you're talking about regulating the water, normally you have like a solenoid. Um, and that solenoid, I think, is normally closed. So you only got power when you've got the water on. Um, can you remember what the current was, the current requirements were for that, lorry? Yeah, depends what the current is. Um, but at a higher voltage, you need less current normally. 
which is why it's good to use something like 20 or 24 volts if you can. I mean, go as high as you can really on the voltage side. Uh, that means you nip, need to put less current in in order to get the same power out. Uh, and I says, I removed the solenoids a couple of years ago. Hmm. Was it the solenoids that are being used to turn the water on and off, or were you using something else? I mean, sometimes you don't have to do that. Sometimes you can actually use a pump and pump the water. So if you're using a tank of water, which is another possible route, um, what you do is you plumb the tank in, just like you do a lavatory system. So it has a float, so it always fills up. But the water coming into that may come from rainwater or it may come from from a hose. And then you use just use gravity. Um, so it's a low pressure system. Um, and you can handle that with, the, with, with a relatively small pump because you're just using gravity nine times out of ten. And they probably use a bit less power in some cases than the solenoids. Solenoids can be really heavy duty sometimes because you're moving a bolt, particularly a bolt under pressure. It was good to have voice control. Turn the sprinkler on. But the number of days you need that in the UK is not many. That's right. Yeah, with with the agro stuff, it's different because the the reason for doing it with the agro stuff is different plants and different vegetables that you may be growing or different herbs require different moisture levels in the soil. And you can't always um, have them in the, exactly the same containers. They may be in different sections of the containers. So what you really need to be able to do is individually water the areas of different plants differently and if you can you know measure the moisture content and things like that so in other words you do more of a scientific growth um growth thing on them and you can also do other things such as you can add pink light as well if you want to encourage the growth you know if you're trying to do something maybe in the winter you know, you can use a combination of um, pink light, pink LED light to uh, boost, um, you know, the, the photosynthesis, you know, when it's quite limited in the winter. But you also have to consider things like um, heating. Um, I mean, obviously, if you've got a greenhouse, you can do it all in there and you can control the temperature in the greenhouse. But... If you're doing it in a kind of um, like a, a miniature um, uh, greenhouse, um, you know, somewhere in, be in between propagation boxes and a greenhouse, like, uh, you know, a plastic coated or polypropylene or something coated um, uh, rack, then um, you can extend your growing cycles and stuff. Um, you can also do things like spot weeds and things. I have seen some of the agro bots actually with like a um, coarse drill bit on the head, on the tool arm. So when you've isolated uh, weeds, which you can do electronically, either use the manual, uh, a manual method, i.e. the machine kind of identifies what it thinks is a weed and you confirm it on the software and then it will... Um, <laughs> Drill it out or spin it out. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do um, on the automation side. Um, you can also control things like um, fertilizer, additions of fertilizer, and growth stuff. You can also monitor the temperature in the environment. So if you've got one of these kind of poly rack shelved systems, then what you can do is you can add some ventilation and open the ventilation if it starts getting too warm in there. 
Um, so there's a number of things you can do that help automatically manage what you're doing to make it less, you know, gardener or farmer intensive um, to automate it. There's an interesting possibility anyhow. It's just one of the ideas I had. Um, you know, it's not a particularly demanding idea, but it's uh, a bit of fun. If you're one of those that have got green thing fingers, you probably wouldn't wouldn't bother with any of this because you enjoy doing it anyhow. But uh, yeah, I'm not exactly a gardener myself. Uh, I'd rather spend my time working on some of the other things, such as this. So if I can automate that, then great. Uh, Laurie says, my daughter would like control of her greenhouse. She was asking me about solar panel control. Um, yeah, there's a number of things you can do, Laurie. I mean, what you really need is you need to have a battery in there, obviously. You can have panels to charge that. You need an MPPT to do the charging. Um, you can put things like motors on the... Um, often with a greenhouse, you'll have a window that opens or a... <coughs> or a flap or you'll have the um, like louvered things so what you want to be able to do is motorize those so you can control how the air flows out to keep the temperature just where you want it <coughs> stop it getting too hot when it's really sunny and then the other things you can do are automatic um, watering and stuff <coughs> I mean they would be the same software that same hardware just on a greenhouse you probably need it on two sides because normally you have in a greenhouse you have you know you walk into the center and then either side you've got shelves so it's the same system but you effectively double up no it's just my garden there's too many trees and not enough spaces where I get enough light for growing herbs or vegetables are they your trees or are they someone else's? If they're your trees, you can actually trim them. If they're someone else's, then you have to ask them to trim them politely. But yeah. I mean, you can make it really small. You can make it like a little shelf or herb garden that you have on your windowsill if you want you can make it as big or as small as you want your automation theory is the same be a little compact and bijou if you had uh, a kind of shelf one you know if you've got a flat or something like a window shelf version there's not much much cartesian in that it's kind of single axis um <laughs> Depends how long the shelf is really and how wide. Yeah, if you've got a balcony, you can do a bit more. Mainly my trees, though, says, well, it's your own fault then. You need to trim them. Prune them. <laughs> I was hacking away at uh, my tree last weekend, actually, because it was starting to invade the back end of um, my workshop here. Um... And it was starting to, you know, this has actually got a flat roof on. And it was actually starting to lay on top of that and hit the corner of that and hit the guttering and stuff. So I had to cut it back. So I did the whole thing and, you know, trimmed it short, stopped it overhanging the neighbours and stuff. Uh, luckily, they managed to rescue their bird feeder before I cut that particular branch off. But, uh, yeah, a bit more light out there now. Because it's a big bay tree right out the back here. I've got some even bigger ones further down nut trees and all sorts that I've got to deal with. I've got a, an apple tree, but that's not too bad because that's got, I've trained all the branches to come round. You know, there's an arch and stuff there as well. That bears a lot of fruit every year. I'm not really a gardener. I'm making it sound like I am and I'm not. I'm lazy as hell. I, I can't put the hours in. But um, yeah, any, as I say, anything that can automate this stuff is, is worthwhile. But yeah, it's just one idea, you know, another thing that we can do on the automation front. And it's interesting.
Um, num, 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 num. But once you've done your Cartesian system, then you can apply it to all sorts of different things. There's all sorts of automation problems that need a Cartesian system. Um, so once you've got that bit done, it's easy to reapply it to all sorts of different things. Um, you know, you can use it for things like stock automation and all sorts of things like that, which is kind of handy sometimes. If you're doing a small amount of um, stock management with the same things. Right, so, uh, right, let's get on with some CAD here. So this is the current um, layout. So what I've got to do, at the moment we've got these through hole uh, connectors on here and I'm, I'm trying to move away from the through hole wherever I can because it makes it a pain in the ass to get them made <clears throat> normally it ends up with me having to spend hours and hours sitting in front of my um, soldering iron which is a pain in the backside time consuming it's also not that good for my health quite frankly although I do have you know small fume extractors and stuff which I need um, so if I can get the surface mount ones on, I can populate it when I populate the other surface mount um, component. So um, what those connectors look like are these. This is what the um, this is what they look like as a pattern. So what I need here is for each motor, I effectively need two of those because there's four uh, wires for driving a stepper motor. Uh, four phases, uh, two H bridges. So I will need effectively need 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 four of these, which I'm going to need to copy this. Just move some of this other stuff out of the way. And the schematic. Mm -hmm. I should also mention that. Um, Laurie's been really busy writing M. Mijin stuff, which is very, very cool. Um, you should put a link in to the stuff that you've done so far for everyone else that's watching. Laurie, to the repo. And what we've got here, let me just look at the spacing. And if you move a bit closer. Thanks, Larry. Um, and this week we were talking about. Uh, Quad SPI, dual SPI and SPI. Um, Laurie's been doing quite a bit of stuff using Wishbone, which is a bus. And that gives you a standard way to address peripherals that you're designing in the FPGA um, and to control the communication to and from them. And one of the things that would be useful is to have uh, an interface to the wishbone using SPI, dual SPI, maybe quad SPI, and then later we're adding FMC as well, for the ECP5 version later. Um, the Black Eyes MX only goes up to dual SPI, DSPI, so but that will run at 108 megahertz, megabits, sorry, 108, 108 megahertz clock, which gives us about 200 megabits per second into the wishbone which is kind of nice um, the other thing that 
that uh, Laurie pointed out was there's a nice bit of Rust software that will talk over a, uh, you know, if you build the UART into, um, into the wishbone as well, you can control it from, from some Rust software, which is kind of cool. So you can do some analysis as well. That'd be even better when we get to the ESP5 because we'll have a very fast USB on there. You know, uh, high speed USB 2, um, 480 megabit per second link. So we'll be able to do even better analysis then on, on any internal bus. So some great work that Laurie's been doing. Hopefully I'll get a chance to play around with some of that soon once I get these, some of this hardware stuff ordered. Um, so on here then, what I'm going to need to do, let me just link up. Um, I'm going to have to change. I've got a whole bunch of polygons on there for the motor lines. So I'm going to have to change that. So let me just first, I've got to name these. I need kind of M1, M2, M1, M2 plus. I need to call these something slightly different actually. What do we call them? On these steppers they're named a1, A2, B1, B2, A1, A2, um, M1, A1, do that first. Oh, let me just check which number this is. Let's see if I can do that. I am working on the schematic in the background here. You should see the changes coming through on the um, um, PCB. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we're going to have some of this. Okay. He's probably going to be upside down. Give me a sec. Let's have a look. Okay. That's good. Next one. M1 B2 M1, B1, yes, they're crossed, of course they're crossed, damn it. 
is correct. This. Just when you think you got it right, you get it around the wrong way completely. Okay, that's better. That's the first one. Right, next one. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing again. And this is going to be motor two. That's going to be. No motor two. Anyone? Motor two. Two. And to be one. And to be one. Two be one. And then two, just label those. And then finally, the last motor control, we need to do the same thing here. I'll tell you what I'd love to have is what uh, Peter does, which is have some music in the background and then some automatic ducking. That would be kind of cool. What do you guys feel about that? I mean, obviously, I'd need to um, set that up in OBS, which I'm assuming I will find out how to be able to do at some point. Um, but when you are doing something longer, like CAD work or programming, um, it kind of fills the spacing in between, I guess, to use a uh, Dave Matthews quote. I do like this song. Spaces in between. You know that in ages. Right, let me just connect this up. M3 one three two and three a one and finally one now that should be about right so what I'm going to do is I need to kill these polygons um, delete polygon delete polygon delete polygon Um, um, um. Get rid of my wonky polygons. 
because I copied and pasted this part of the circuit from another board. And then I need to kill off, hold on, get rid of these um, connectors, hold on. The other thing I need to do is change the um, um, end stops. So these need to be more generic now. They're not necessarily just end stops. They could be quadrature encodes if we wanted them, or they could be end stops. Right, I'm going to leave them on there for a moment because I need to replace them with something surface mount. Might be able to use the same connectors. Let me just get these out of the way temporarily. Ah. Okay. I'm going to leave them there so I don't forget to do them later. I'm going to put those on the other side of the board, I think. Let's get these on here now. Ah! No, I didn't want to do that. I want to do this. Um, let me just save where we are here. It fits quite neatly. Um, so, in response to the music possibility, Nori said, depends on the music. Yeah, well, that's the other thing as well. If you do add music, you want it at a re relatively low level so it doesn't, you know. Offend, but yeah, sometimes it might not be people that might not be music that people like. Have you watched um, Peter's uh, stream, Esden's stream? Sorry, it will be the same sort of music that he uses because he, I think he, um, I can't remember what he connects to, but yeah. It will be um, basically non-copyrighted music, instrumental. Some of it's quite good. Backgroundy stuff. <laughs> right. So uh, the other thing I need to do is just move this now. I need to work out how I'm going to squeeze all this in. At the moment, my um, reservoir caps here. Reservoir caps, not reservoir dogs, uh, are a bit too close to existing components. Um, I was wondering if I can uh, shove them somewhat in that direction. No, that direction. We got them reversed. Um, Can I easily do this? Now, these big uh, resistors here, these um, 1202s or 1204s, what are they? 1206s, they might be actually. 
1206s. These are the current sense resistors. They're pretty critical. Um, might be difficult to move those. I mean, I could reduce the size of these other components. But that makes um, placement a bit more difficult. I don't know. I don't have much room here to shift this stuff. Hold on, let's look at that one. Which are the ones that are really sticking out? That one is. And that one is. How much? I mean, can I do that? Possibly. And then I can move the group a bit closer in. I take these right to the edge. And then I can do this. Oh, it's going to be a pain. I'm going to move the frame as well. How close can I get that? I'm not really gaining much here. Hmm. I mean, these can go around the outside. It's the center one where I have the least flexibility. No problem here, shoving those up. But these internal ones, you can't do that. I mean, I could populate on the other side, but I'm trying to avoid that, really. I want everything on the other side to be optional. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. What if I go like this? No, nah, it's not going to help me, is it? I mean, I could potentially lose some of these. I need to think carefully about the power provision on this. I mean, this center one could be moved that away, perhaps slightly different from these which may buy me a bit, but it doesn't buy me this one, unfortunately. I'd have to move both of those, and that's going to impinge on here. Oh, dearie, 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 dearie. There is one other possibility, and that is to have the connectors on the other side. Oh, I don't really want to have to do that. Mm. Damn, I'm out of T2. Um, think, 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 think. How would I possibly? shift this across i can't stack these the other way because they're going to impede on the connector hmm i mean i can go for larger caps but the trouble is the height gets too high i wonder 
I could optionally have more caps on the other side. That's a possibility. I don't know if I find I need them. I have, I've just moved the problem. Just kicked it into the long grass. Why is this so far out, by the way? Just strange. That's weird. Should be thirty seven, thirty eight. Also, oh, no, this isn't aligned. Oh, ugly. Let me just correct these because these are all just off like little and it's bugging me. I'm not OCD at all normally. Well, okay, just a little. <sighs> right, okay. Um, what else can I do to squeeze these? It's because these connectors are wider than where we were before. Could turn those around. That will buy me a little bit. Let's get a bit close. Yes, yeah, still rather close, I'd say. Touch and go. Oh, crikey. Mm -hmm. Right, let's just try routing this, see what this looks like. So, if I was going to do that, that's going to have to dive down, isn't it? What do I need here? I have to come out at three. Then I'm going to have to dive down to oh, I don't know. Mm, that's annoying.
And then that would mean that this one is a connect three. Hmm. Three. And that way around. Now I need to go to that. And then I wonder how to do that. I've done the wrong thing here. I have. Damn. Oh, I forgot. Sugar. I can't go that way. I wonder if maybe hmm, maybe I shouldn't be going down to ground from here. I should be doing that up here. Let me just check something. What is that? That is a ground signal, isn't it? Oh, B plus. Oh, yes. So that doesn't need to be there. Right. Let's get rid of this. I'm going to break this design somewhat. I know why it's there like that. I'm going to break it. Right. Let's go again, shall we? What I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to jump to that. Oh, I need to be a bit careful here. I'm going to be very close to that. Okay. And the final one. Wait. Is that the same? It is. I'm going to break that as well. Might regret this. Let me think. Uh, I'm going to have to dive down here. Go down to the bottom. And then let's jump up to here. Come on. 
the top. Move it again, it's because I've come up too low. Error processing polygons. There, I see. Yeah, they need changing somewhat. I wonder if I can do this on a two layer. Probably not. Let me, um, let's just refresh this because otherwise you can't see what we're doing. Just want to have a look at these signals here. That's going to be a bit close. Oh, I bet I'm going to get a whole crap load of these. Well, that seems to be okay. It's this corner that's the problem. I'm just going to need to push it slightly that way. That needs to go that way also. Right, how are we doing here? Oh, that needs to be a little smaller. I think so. Hold on. Actually. What am I doing? Let's not do that there. Let's have that on the top. Let's do it there. Why do you keep using octagons? I don't really want it to use octagons. Visual circular. Actually, octagons might be slightly better from a tessellation point of view here. It gets tight. DLC check. What is going on there? Hold on. Reset that. Okay. Why well, have I got this X here? What the hell is here? What does it think? What's there? Oh. What? Top, top, top. Is there something really small there that I can't see? What the hell is that connecting to? It throwing one of its wobblers. I'm going to ignore it for now. I can deal with that. Great. So, anyhow, how does that look? That looks okay. Let's just do the next one. Let's get rid of this stuff again. Okay. Let's do this one first, come out, we need to do all that size until about here, and then we can go on to the big I think I need to jump down to the and we have to move that out slightly, and then this one. Uh, 
Okay. Right. It's going to be like that, is it? Let's just go. Yeah. Down to the bottom. And then we need to come back about here ish. To the top. We need to come down towards something more reasonably sized. So Use the right size, Mr. Wood. <laughs> Sorry, folks, it shouldn't take too much longer. Let's just uh, create. Let's go this one around. Put that here. And let's go up to a reasonable size. And then this one we need to put this one again. So we go here down to bottom. So bearish to the top and I need to get rid of this. This is wrong. Do it again. And I want to be on the top. Thus. Nice. And then this one, well, we're going all the way around the houses for this because we're getting. Somewhat low here. Again. Do this one. Um, there. It's going to be a bit tighter. Tight. Me and tight. Yeah, that's gonna. Hmm. Hmm. Just to watch, we're gonna be close to that corner. And they're probably gonna have to redo that in a sec. Um. This one here. So we're gonna need to do. That down to the bottom. Down to that bearish. And then up to the top. Size down to that there. And then to the corner. And then this one. Same again. That's the angle, and then we're going to go to the larger track size, and then finally, this one to the bottom, and then let's take the size down. Oh, you bugger. <sighs> oh, what's going on here? Double back on itself.
What on earth is it doing? Why is it doing that? Still thinks there's something there. This is what's really weird. This is what I had just now. It thinks there's something here underneath this, yet it's not visible. Weird. Right. What is going on? Okay. <laughs> this is strange. It's doing something really odd. Not connecting. Is the way it should. Just um, get rid of that again. Maybe because I've got these invalid polygons that it doesn't like. I don't need to get rid of those. This one right there. It's this one. I mean, what the hell is that? No, oh, I didn't want to do the whole thing. That's fine. This one here. Bonkers. I do not understand. Hold on, if I pick this up. On this side. Oh, I'm being an idiot. Excuse me. Help if I was actually on the right layer, wouldn't it? Top, not bottom. Um, yeah, and then bingo. Not that difficult, is it? When you're on the right layer. Okay, those are done. Oh, I wonder if I can get away with that. Right, I'm going to take a quick uh, comfort break, guys. yourselves and I need a refreshment. Turn back again. Uh -huh. 
Now I'm peckish. I need some things. Let me just get some sugar. Right. How are we doing for time? Yeah. So um stuck. Right. Um Let me just check the schematic. Let's go have a look at the power planes. Minus. So where are these going to then? So that one is a V plus signal, motor, power. It's the same pins here, here, all the way down. I probably need to have a via the V plus up here. So I've got a V plus layer. I might not need four layers. Where's V minus come in here? Ground pad. This one? Yeah. Top. B minus. Okay. Well, I'm just going to turn the polygons on. Wonder what, which one is it going to complain about? Signal V plus contains invalid polygons. Okay. Let's see if we can solve that. B minus. Next. B plus. Let me just hide the others temporarily. Okay, so that's ground. Yeah, I might not need that.
Okay. I've got an idea. Let's make B minus smaller. No, B plus. Hmm, um, I'm wondering, <sighs> maybe I should just stick with, um, hold on. I might stick with four because the reason to stick with four is that if I um, it's probably better to have four layers to be fair than two I think I can do it in two but four will make it easier and it will make the signals actually better in terms of power distribution it has a lot of advantages having those extra layers thanks for shutting the door loudly um hmm Let me just go back and fix this. Um, this connection. Something wrong here. I need to turn my layers back on. What is it that it doesn't like here? Yeah. That should be on the top for a start. But I will not like it here. Let's just um, do this again. Do that. Yes, I know there's something wrong with that polygon. Damn it. I have to fix that in a minute. It's just annoying. So now, where does it think that is? What's there? It thinks there's something there that isn't. There's nothing there. I cannot see anything. Hold on. Can I grab it? Okay, let's rip it up. No, I don't want to rip the whole thing up. Thank you. Just this one. Damn it. I hate this shit. So annoying.
what do you think is there? CAD program. What if I move this over here? Does that move with it? That's not moving, is it? Move. Move group. Yeah, it definitely thinks there's something there. Look. What the hell does it think it's got? Bonkers. Maybe, hmm, if I get rid of this, can I? Let's just mess with this polygon, because maybe this is causing it. You sometimes get these weird... Let's move you the there. Let's see what's wrong here. Where is this polygon broken? There. Is that what the problem is? What happens if I do it now? Okay, that was it. Let me just put this back. I know what the problem is. It's because this one here. No. Nope. This here. This is Yay. Complaining. It's good. Looking slightly prideish. That colour scheme. Oh, right, now let's get back to here. Yes, look, strangely, that issue isn't there anymore. Just shows. So, yeah, because it's having a problem with those polygons, it was imagining issues elsewhere or rather it wasn't getting rid of issues that it should have been hold on let's just join these up uh, good better that more or less fits. I've got to have a think now. How am I going to do these? Um, I do need to mess with the power planes, but how am I going to deal with these? What connector do I want? I mean, I could put some connectors on the top, some surface mount versions of these, or I could have a header connection. So these these currently house connections to the MX0, MX1, and MX2. On the, on the the mix signal mix signals um, those could be used for homing among other things um, for um, end stops you need those for the um, open loop 
motor controls. I do already have a um, header for mixed malts. Sorry for the mixed signal parts. What's unused? I could repeat that. However, um, that's a 0.1 inch header, and it uses um, these. I'm not sure how well those would work. The difficulty here is the um, focusing on me. The difficulty is having the connectors come into the top. It depends how they're going to go out to connect to whatever they're going to go to. Um, I mean, just to show you what I mean, if I was to use these, let's just steal. So let's just open one of the other ones. I'm just going to steal this quickly. Make a change. this on here and then what I can do is I can do let's get rid of that oh, come on come on come on what do I do on here ground we need that we just rewire this connector Do something like this, maybe. Oh, come on. What is going on here? Oh, I get it. Sorry, I'm just wiring this in. Something like this, and then that goes. I 
can't easily fit it on here because it's going to be on the wrong side. So just um, put that on the other side of the board. Um, that can go pretty much anywhere, but it probably wants to go somewhere out of the way. Down here, maybe. Just a bit. Bear with me, this is an older circuit diagram, it's got some strange connections. <clears throat> Let me just get rid of the old connectors, bear with me. Okay, it's a bit messy on the old um, Schematic. So now, I mean, these have to go in here actually. I need these on here. Where's that going? It's going to ground. Um, Ground, ground, that goes there. This one goes there, and that, and this one goes there. That's all a bit tight, actually, but roughly. those are the input filter capacitors for the uh, end stop. We have a pull up 10k and then a pull down uh, 0.1 microfarad. basically acts as a low pass filter coming in um, that's good for end stop but if we were doing quadrature encoding that might not be so good but we haven't really got enough pins to do quadrature encoding for each of the drives anyhow so it's probably pointless trying to support that just leave this as it is that will work roughly um, I need to shift that up just a touch, and that's rather close to this line here. Ooh, it's awkward. I might have to move this. Where can I put it? Put it over there. <sighs> Maybe.
Mm. Not sure where the best place for that is. Mm -hmm. it could go maybe somewhere like that actually oh no I can't do that damn uh, trust me to go there Maybe. Hold on. Well, so we've got some really thumping music outside. Very strange. I'm just going to put it up here for a moment. I need to turn these polygons off that bloody help. Temporarily. There we go. Something like that. Okay, it's more or less done. Um, what I do need to route is the power planes. I could probably do that in my own time. Uh, and I've got to work out how maybe to shift this slightly. This is really close here. Really a bit too close for comfort. Let's have a think about gaining a little bit more. I mean, I wonder if I can shove this any closer. I don't think it's going to go any closer because I'm going to start getting DRC errors. Which one have we got? Um, let's have a look. We're okay at the moment. If we get any closer to the edge, we're going to start getting DRC errors, I think. We are nearly down on this. Oh, we've got some other bits and bobs on here. What have I got that here for? What is that? What is that for? Oh, I need to look at whether I'm using the interrupt on this or not. But otherwise, I think that looks good. A few teething issues to deal out with the power planes. I need to check the interrupt. Um, the way that these drivers work is also a bit funky and I need to just double check when I connecting to what here so I've got three step signals three direction signals one for each axis but in addition to that I've got a transmit receive signal which is a duplex half duplex connector to here 
um, using a well, not completely unique scheme um, to uh, Trinamic, but basically it's a one wire um, signal, which is why it's half duplex. Um, the enable signal, hold on, it's got to go on to here. That's that's not enable signal, I don't know what that is. We've got another signal there. On the steppers we have a diagnostic pin. There's an index and a diagnostic. So the diagnostic can be used like um, to convey error signals. So I think it's active high. Trouble is, so what, see the diagnostic thing can be activated if there's an overcurrent, an undercurrent, or it could be if it detects, I believe, um, what do they call it? Uh, So if the motor doesn't move properly, the current sensitivity on it's good enough to detect a stall on the motor and it can signal that via the diag. So the diag signal on each stepper driver can send a high level, but because they're going to be sharing that pin, I would then in turn have to query them all using the half duplex UART to find out which one kicked off. In fact, it may have been more than one. You know, if the axis is stuck somewhere, got caught on something, for example. So I think one of those should definitely be a diag. Um, which is probably because I was wondering well could I use the interrupt line for that and I'm not sure I should using the um, diag on one of the pins might be a better idea I could still use the interrupt for the oh mm, could I use it for the End stops. Hmm. Trouble is, I've got the capacitance on those. It is possible with a small resistor network. You need to have a think about that. So I'm using all those pins up. When I'm, I'm, I tell you what, I'm not using is I'm not using the CS pin. I need to have a think about using that. Because I'm not using the spy. There is no spy peripheral on these steppers. Um, so I can use the CS pin to do something. I could use that to test to um, to trigger an activation on any of the end stops. I could use a wired or which is free diodes. Possibly. 
have to have a think about that. That would leave the interrupt free because I'm not sure I want to use the interrupt for the end stops. So I'll put a question mark on my schematic actually. Um, and or two TR. I'm just leaving a note on the schematic so I don't forget it. Right. Okay, I think um, that might be enough for me today. I think I'm going to call it a day. These other bits I can finish off the power flames and that wide or possibly trigger signal on the CS. Um, I can do in my own time. Right, um, so I'll probably, I will probably not stream again till next Wednesday. I will be down on um, on uh, both on the forum and also on Discord. Do join me if you need to. Um, Snooze Badger, do you, are you a member down on um, on Discord? I should probably post the link actually just in case. Hold on. Yeah, weird. Uh, there's a link for the Discord, uh, folks. Right, so I'm going to call it quits. I will um, either speak to you on the forum or Discord, or if not, maybe see you next week. Um, thank you, everyone, for participating. Ciao.